In this video, we'll talk about how to install RetroPie on your Raspberry Pi. The RetroPie team recently released version 4.8 and we'll briefly touch on some of the release information. The installation process for RetroPie has been made quite a bit easier using a tool called Raspberry Pi Imager. If you visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash rpi4gaming and select the official RetroPie link, you'll find most of the information in this video. The goal today is to show you how to get up and running with RetroPie so you can have fun playing all those great classic games you want to play. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. On Pi Day, which was March 14th, 2022, the RetroPie team released RetroPie version 4.8. According to the team, there have been a number of changes, including some visual and functional improvements. The Wi-Fi setup now has an on-screen keyboard for configuring the Wi-Fi password with a controller or joystick. There have also been a number of updates to the cores, emulation station, RetroArch, and more. To set up RetroPie, you'll of course need a Raspberry Pi, such as a Pi 400 or a Pi 02W, or a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, which is what I'll be using during this video. You can use a 2, 4, or 8 gigabyte model. However, a Pi with 4 gigabytes is more than sufficient for RetroPie. Let's take a quick look at the main components of the Raspberry Pi 4. On the left, we have two USB 2.0 ports. The blue are the faster USB 3.0 ports, gigabit Ethernet, the GPIO header pins, the display port, the camera port, and on the side here is the USB-C port for power. You also have two micro HDMI ports, your AV jack, and on the bottom we have the micro SD slot. You will likely want a case for your Raspberry Pi. If you're not sure what to get, there are a number of ideas at wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash guides. Go ahead and select the Raspberry Pi case link or Raspberry Pi 4 Retro Gaming Guide for more information. I'll be using the DeskPi Lite case, which I recently reviewed. I'll place a link up above if you want to learn more about it. To install RetroPi, I'm going to use this 128GB Gigastone microSD card. Of course, you can use an SSD if you prefer. Then head on over to raspberrypi.com forward slash software to download the Raspberry Pi Imager. This tool is available for various operating systems such as Windows, Mac OS, Ubuntu x86, and Raspberry Pi OS. Insert the micro SD card into your computer and launch the Pi Imager application. From there, select Choose OS under Operating Systems. And as you scroll down the list, you'll see Emulation and Game OS, so go ahead and select that. There are options for various Raspberry Pi models, including the Pi 1, 0, 02W, so select the one that's appropriate for your hardware. Since I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, I'll select the option for the Pi 4 400 near the bottom of the list. Next, select Choose Storage, and now we're going to select the micro SD card, which I've already inserted. A handy tip is if you press Ctrl, Shift, and X all at the same time, it will pop up a configuration dialog with more options. Scroll down until you see the configure Wi-Fi option and what you do go ahead and click the checkbox and from there verify the SSID is correct and your password is correct and if everything looks good there scroll down a little bit further until you see your Wi-Fi country I'll go ahead and select mine which is US and then click the checkbox for set locale settings and yes that's fine and once everything is set properly go ahead and click save now we're pretty much ready to go we'll just click the right button here on the right and it's going to warn us that the data is going to be erased click yes to continue if you're sure that's the correct drive RetroPie will then be downloaded and written to the micro SD card once the write is completed click the continue button and close out of the Pi imager and safely eject your micro SD card. Now I'll go ahead and insert it into the Raspberry Pi 4 in the DeskPi Lite case. We'll bring in the monitor and go ahead and plug in the power. And in this case, it's got a full size HDMI port. A number of other cases may need a micro HDMI to HDMI cable such as this one. 
In terms of controllers, there are many to choose from, such as this Re keyboard and controller combo. The 8-bit DO controllers, such as this SN30 Pro Plus, are popular options as well, but I'll be using this clone Xbox controller for the setup here. I'll go ahead and plug in the USB cable to the controller, and then power on the Raspberry Pi 4, and we'll move on to the software setup. When you first boot up RetroPie, you'll see this blue screen, which will resize the micro SD card to its full capacity. The Pi will then reboot, and then shortly after that, Emulation Station will start up. The first thing we need to do is map our controller. So I'll hold down a button on the controller, and it will show it is detected, and then we can begin mapping the buttons. I'll use the orientation shown in the configuration image. Keep in mind, if there is a button that you don't have on your controller, you can press and hold a button to skip. I'll continue with the analog buttons, pressing in on the left and right, and then up, down, left, right, and on the right stick, up, down, left, right, and for the hotkey, we'll hit select, and then press A. You may recall in Pi Imager, we had previously set up the Wi-Fi. Let's do a quick check to make sure the Pi is in fact connected to our Wi-Fi network. In RetroPi, we'll select the Wi-Fi option at the very bottom, and it'll launch the Wi-Fi configuration. And as you can see, a local IP address has been assigned, and it's connected. While we're here, I want to demonstrate a new feature in RetroPi 4.8, when we select Connect to Wi-Fi Network and our SSID, we now have the ability to use a controller to enter our password. That's a handy and welcome feature that's new in RetroPie 4.8. In order to play games in RetroPie, you're going to potentially need two different types of files. The BIOS stands for the Basic Input and Output System, which is the actual code from the console or machine. A ROM stands for read-only memory, and these are the games that you will copy to the Pi. Both BIOS and ROMs are typically copyrighted material, and as such I can't provide any links on where to acquire them for obvious reasons. However, they are easily found using your favorite search engine. There are also ROMs that may be found at mamedev.org for non-commercial use. What you intend to install and play on your retro Pi system is totally up to you. After you've downloaded the BIOS and ROM files that you want to run, I'll show you two methods for copying the files over to RetroPie. The first method will be to use a USB stick or thumb drive. Locate your USB thumb drive. Make sure you're 100% sure which drive is selected. Right click, select format. For the file system, select FAT32 if it's 32 gigs or less, otherwise XFAT. Go ahead and give the volume label a name. I'm going to call mine RetroPie. Go ahead and hit start and OK, and the drive will be formatted. Great. Now we close out of that, and then double click, and right click, and select New Folder. And from here we'll create a subdirectory called RetroPie. And if we double click in our RetroPie directory, of course there's nothing there, but we're going to change that in just a moment. In the lower right, right click and eject the USB thumb drive. Now on our Raspberry Pi running RetroPie, we'll plug in the thumb drive into the USB 3.0 port, just because it's a little faster, and you'll notice the LED is blinking real quick, and that means it's creating some subfolders for us. Once the LEDs stop blinking, which is usually just a few seconds, we'll plug it into our PC and we see our subdirectories have been created in our RetroPie subfolder. Now we can copy our BIOS files, so I'm going to go ahead and select all my BIOS files and copy them over to our BIOS subdirectory on the USB thumb drive in the directory that was created by RetroPie. Then we'll go under ROMs, and here's all our games, so I'm going to do the same for uh, my source directory, which is on the left. I'm going to exclude the BIOS directory by pressing Control. And now I'll just copy all of my ROMs over to the ROM subfolder. Now we're going to do the same thing, eject the drive, and then plug it into our Raspberry Pi, running RetroPie. And now all the games that we copied to the USB thumb drive will be copied over to RetroPie. And this may take a while, so be sure and let it sit there for several minutes. If you have an LED indicator like on this case, be sure and wait till it stops blinking. The games won't immediately show up. 
You'll need to restart emulation station first. To do that, press the start button on your controller, move down to quit, and then restart emulation station, and yes, and emulation station will restart and your games list will now appear. The second method for copying files is network copy, which is one I use frequently. Open Explore, and up at the top, type in backslash backslash RetroPie and press enter. When you do that, you'll see the network shares for RetroPie, including BIOS, our ROM subdirectory. Now let's say I want to copy a few Atari 2600 games. So I'll double click on the Atari 2600 folder and drag and drop my files and copy them into that subdirectory. And there we go. Now we can switch back over to the Raspberry Pi. And again, we're going to hit start, go to quit, restart emulation station, yes. And now our games will show up in our list. I want to provide you with some basic operation information to help you get started. To exit the game, you'll typically press select and start at the same time, assuming you map select as your hotkey. To insert a credit in an arcade game, press the select button and start to start the game. To shut down your Pi, from the main RetroPie menu, press the start button and then navigate to quit and shut down. Unless you have installed a safe shutdown script for your case, you won't want to just power it off, or it could potentially corrupt your storage media. From the main RetroPie menu, press the Start button, and you'll find some additional menu options that may be helpful, such as the scraper utility to download box art and metadata for the games. Within the sound settings, you can adjust the volume by moving the controller or stick left to right. And if you don't hear any sound, you can also adjust the audio devices needed for your setup. If an emulator is selected, you may have a potentially large list of games. To make navigation easier, press the Select button and select the first letter of the game you want to jump to, and it'll navigate to games starting with that letter. If you're in an arcade game with a keyboard connected, press the Tab key to enter the input or general configuration or input for the currently running game. For more advanced control, you can press Select plus X to enter the RetroArc menu, which has a ton of configuration options to explore. You can also use your Raspberry Pi running RetroPie in a full-size arcade cabinet, such as this one that my son and I found sitting near a dumpster. We brought it home and totally refurbished it, including adding a working coin door, custom control panel, and monitor mount. If woodworking isn't of interest, you can also pick up the At Games Legends Ultimate and connect a USB Type-A to Type-A OTG cable and HDMI cable, which will allow you to play all your games on an arcade cabinet. You can find out more information on the Legends Ultimate at the link below. To take your RetroPie setup to the next level, you may want to check out the 10 RetroPie tips that may be found on the RetroPie Tips Guide at wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash RetroPie Tips. From there, you can take a look at the table of contents to pick the ones that are of interest to you. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll find the RetroPie Tips with a video that covers all the tips that are documented on this guide, such as scraping artwork. Maybe you want to install or add a new theme, creating a favorites game list, or remote connect to your RetroPie from your PC. It also covers how to back up your RetroPie image and why you may want to do so, as well as how to restore it. There's even a section on adding additional emulators and much more information that you may find helpful. At this point, you have seen how to install RetroPie on your Raspberry Pi 4 and should be well on your way to playing some classic games. You've also seen where you can find additional information to help you get the most out of RetroPie. I appreciate any feedback you have in the comments below, and if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, please click the subscribe button, and with that, I will talk to you again very soon.